All right. Welcome. Welcome back to Rick Hills Real Estate with one of my favorite guests, Dylan McNavage with Pro Inspect. How are you doing, Dylan? Doing great, Rick. It's been too long. It has. I uh, uh, can't wait to get you on again because I'm a big fan of your your Instagram uh, posts that you have there that you find at inspections. And uh, how do people find you on Instagram, by the way? It's uh, Pro Inspect underscore AZ. Okay. I recommend that highly to everybody because... Yeah. I mean, my gosh, you had one this morning. It, I, well, I don't think it was your inspection, but there were, what, 20 rattlesnakes in a garage? Yeah, that's, that's just making the rounds. And that was in Mesa. That's not far from us, but it was yeah, right around the corner. It's like, I I have I have a nightmare like that every couple of months. It's, <laughs> you yeah, see it actually yeah. happen. I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, that's rough. I'd, I'd say it, at uh, the garage, I don't know if it's good or bad. I'll talk to you later. So. Yeah. But you've been uh, you've been putting up a lot of stuff that you're finding in new construction, and it just blows me away. And yep. you did one on an air conditioning unit the other day that that I hope people see. And uh, uh, and you said that it's like it's the same air conditioning company every time. And it is, uh, and the amount of leaks that they have. So the one thing that that I get from from watching this is, you know, look, even if you're not buying a home or getting a new home, you've really got to pay attention to some of this stuff because it also might make you look at your own house and see, oh, do I have that here? Because you've had several videos of the little flaps, the vents that have been painted shut on just about every new home that you look at. And uh, But you also point out some things that we should go out and check in our own home. So um, especially some foundational things. So whether or not you hire Dylan or not um, is fine. You just need to enjoy these videos for the value that they have. And I hope you enjoy them like I have, but I have to ask, what is this? Ah, so we are on the ground looking up. That's my okay. camera on the ground looking up. What that is, we're looking at the bottom of the stucco. So that metal piece is weep screed. That's the, comes out. And the way they frame this is inside. That, that's your plywood for the wall sheathing. And then okay. behind that's the wall plate. This whole wall was sticking out probably about four to five inches past the foundation and around the entire perimeter of the home, just this two to three inch gap where you could just anything, any rodent, any critter could just walk right into the home if they wanted to. I looked at it, me and the buyer looked at it, I'm like, I don't know how they're going to fix this. You could see the foreman had no idea how to fix it. And he's like, I, I don't know why they did it this way. And with the whole house, you could just, I could stick my hand in between the wall and the foundation. So imagine Man. walking a Pesca fit in there. And imagine the uh, the wind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the wind, rain. Yeah, you name it. Termites are going to love it, everything. Holy cow. Yeah. And the foreman just kind of had to roll his eyes, huh? They do. They they, they do. They, uh, yeah, the quality control is getting tough. It's, it's been a rough couple of years for new construction. Holy cow. Well, what yeah. the heck is this, Dylan? Ah, that's just the main power supply for the house. And if you can zoom, I don't know if you can zoom in or not by that. See, though, it's, um, that is a 200 amp service one of those is that, that, that that's a main feed you can see the way, the way they put those in they lug them like that before it goes into power i'm trying to point it to it like you can see my finger they actually cut through about half of the strands that's one wire it's a multi-strand and they cut through about half of them what you can't see is in that panel about half the arc fault well three arc fault breakers were completely tripped because they weren't getting enough power and i was getting flickering if i turn this on that would turn off and it was all because the power there. It's like, think of a water supply line feeding your house and you're just going to crimp half of it. That's so what we're they, dealing with there. So, yeah. so they, they put it this way. You found it. Um, does it kind of make you wonder, did they even try to see how the electricity was working out? Or? No, I, I mean, it wasn't working when I got there. When I got there, there were three trip breakers. And I was like, and I tried to get them back on. They wouldn't go. I'm like, what is happening? Then I looked, I'm like, oh, well, that's probably it right there. But it could be something else because we'll see another video here about some electrical stuff that could cause those things to trip as well. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. Here's, um, um, let me go to this one um, and see what. Oh yeah, this is a new water supply line. We're gonna zoom in and I'm looking at PEX. And you're gonna see a little drip coming off of that joint right there. Oh, there, I see yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what was what's funny is when I got to this house, water was off. And that that floor, the subfloor was completely dry. The home's dried in, shouldn't be, and there was a wet spot on the floor. So I think they knew about it, but I don't know if they they didn't tell me about it, that's for sure. 
And when I got there, it was dripping pretty good because it was leaking. That's a brand new supply line. And um, by the time I left, it was done. So I think they knew about it and they had the water shut off. But if I've seen stuff like that in the walls where it's not so obvious. And it's just those weak joints that they put together. And then you had um, this one here talking about vents. I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah, this is great. So here. just look at this. Yeah, now the one on the right that we're looking at, that's the supply line, that's supply air. And the one on the left is the return air. First of all, you go into any normal house, you're gonna have your supply, your supply register in the middle of the room or near the back of the room, not right by the front door. That's like 1950s style, right? So look how close that supply register is, is to the door and to the wall. Like there wasn't an inch. Now, as it blows out, it's gonna cross the path of that return air which is twice the size of it. So the returner is sucking the supplier right back into the house, right back into the system before it has a chance to circulate through the room. And I cranked the AC in that house and that room was just, was not getting cold at all. So, so how do they, do they even fix something like that after you point it out? No, no, that, no, probably not. Um, that's a good thing to find during pre-drywall. So if I see it on pre-drywall, I call that. That's one thing I look for a lot on pre-drywall because it's so easy at that point just to move it over, just a few feet. That's it, just move it over a few feet. And sometimes I'll do it. Sometimes they don't. But when it's like this, I'll have to get into the ceiling, move it over, and then repatch everything. The problem with that house, it was a pretty tight attic. And that same company that I always see doing the work did it. And they just they just stopped short. But I, I couldn't believe how close to the the wall they got and the front door. It was just, it was nuts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. I saw that, you know, without even listening to what you were talking about. And I thought, that can't be right. Because it no, just it is. Yeah. blows in, gets sucked right back yeah. out. And I, I saw it today. I just left another warranty inspection today. I saw the exact same thing, just crossing the return air. Just this no, like this room always gets warm. Like, well, it just never gets cold. It's never going to get cold this way unless you block the return air or something. Now, I had an interesting thing happen in my house that I owned in Chandler. And that was one of them. I had three AC units. So we had a basement. And one of them on one side of the house kept freezing up. And so this uh, AC company comes over and and they said I needed I don't know, at least $1,500 worth of work. And so there was a friend of ours that he says, well, let me come over and check. And he brings his temperature thing over and he looks and he's walking around the house and he stops and he looks at our air return in the, in the little hallway there next to the bathroom. He goes, who uses this? Anybody use this bathroom? I said, yeah, my, my oldest son, that's his, his bathroom. He goes, what time does he shower? I said, after nine o'clock in the morning, usually he goes, found your problem. I go, what? He goes, he doesn't turn the fan on when he takes a shower. So he goes, so that bathroom fills up with steam. He opens the door, walks to his bedroom, and then all that moisture goes up into the air return. Thus, you're no kidding. And oh, forensics. I That's said, good. how do I fix that? He goes, just tell him to turn the fan on. Yeah. And uh, he said, you know, it's fine. Cause the reason he asked after nine o'clock, he goes, after that, it gets up to about 90 degrees outside. So the moisture from the bathroom was going up in there. And, and I thought, man, <laughs> let me yeah, buy yeah. you a beer. So yeah, there's a lot of science happening that you see. It's amazing. But you know, I've seen air filters do that. I've seen all sorts of just dirt and debris and the coil cause those to freeze over, but I can't get into why it happens. I just see it quite a bit. Well, this one is uh, kind of surprising too. And it's got some audio here that you have so hopefully uh, the yeah. audience can hear this but all right there's one wall cavity one wall cavity this, this wire and all these fasteners coming through so let's count there's one right here that is through the wire 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 and we're finally good so in one wall cavity we have a wire being pierced five times so my my question on that is it common that the wires are put up before this outer wall is? Yeah, funny you ask that. So when I when I posted that, everybody was lighting me up, saying like, "Why would they sheet before they wire? Why would they wire before they put the sheathing up?" And they don't. They you you can't. They put the white. They put the sheathing up. They frame the home. They put the sheathing up. They staple through. Some of those nails were there already, and the wire was run a little close to the wall. There's there's codes about that, but it's not really practical to pull off. The issue that we have this is a stucco home. And once the sheathing's on, they put on a moisture barrier that gets stapled or nailed on. Then they put on foam that gets stapled on. Then they put on a lath and then they put on stucco. So 
And that, that's a door. So there's flashing around the door. So I don't know exactly what it was. It was, it was either the staples or the fasteners from the flashing or from the moisture barrier on that stucco. And they just went through and went nuts and they nailed, they just stapled the heck out of it. And then that house, I probably saw six or seven different wall cavities that had staples coming through hitting wires and, and supply lines. So when would that be even noticed after you bought the house and moved in? Uh, it'd be, you would, you would just start losing power. And then, and I was talking to a contractor about it. He goes, yeah, that's a, you have to remove drywall to find it. You don't know where it is. So if you don't find that before they put insulation and drywall, you're not going to find it until you're, you, you have to remove it. Like, don't ask me how you're going to find it. Cause I, I'm just sitting there thinking like, how would they ever find this? You yeah, can't work it out. You, you would know what circuit it is. Yeah. But every circuit starts in the garage and runs through the garage. That was in the garage. So good luck. That would have been the night. Yeah. Where do you start? You say, okay, I'll tear up yeah. the garage wall first. Yeah. Whoops. That's not there. Let me patch this. Now let me tear up this wall. Yeah. I mean, oh man. It, it was funny how many people on Instagram, a lot of people said that was fake. Oh, you staged it. You staged it. I'm like, I swear that was not staged. It was hundred percent real. I don't know where that came from, but it, it happened. And well, I, I wish I would have sent you another photo. I forgot, but there's, I have a good photo of a staple, a PEX, a plastic supply line, a staple going right through the middle of it. I saw, but, I saw a video you did with a, where it was yeah. right in the, in the line. And yeah. I mean, yeah. just imagine the amount of work it would take for you to stage that. First yeah. of all, you have to whack in all those nails with nobody seeing you. Yeah. And I should be arrested if I do that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, glad that didn't happen. So I'm going to yeah. show this one here too. This you're talking about foundation. Now, this is something that that you know, just go out in your own home and see if yeah. if you've got some of this going on. So let me add this to the mix. So let's see how this foundation is supported. See how it's right up on grade, nice and level. So the bottom of the foundation has plenty of support but as you go down the house pay attention to this yeah this now, is nuts the ground gets lower the ground the starts is not but what happens as a result is now the foundation is floating there's actually See that gap support. yeah and watch this, this. completely empty and then right above you got a pretty good stucco crack and then on the other side of that wall on the drywall is a matching crack. So that actually cracked all the way through. And then you can see here this angle. So the bottom of the footing is right about here. You need something called an angle of repose, which has a 45 degree angle off the bottom of the footing. And you just don't have that. Yep. So unfortunately, I don't think this foundation has proper support. And so this whole side of the house is under stress and cracking. So engineers are going to have to get on this one to figure out what's happening. Now, how old was that house? Brand new. He um, he was going to wait for his one-year warranty. He had just moved in about a month and a half ago. And he said, the house is cracking. It's shit. He goes, there's something going on. And so that's a two-story home. Um, and it's a post-tension slab. So there's the weight is distributed, but the exterior walls, especially on the two-story, have a lot of stress. And there's another video that will show how much cracking is actually happening. So as soon as that foundation lost its support on the outside, like if you could do a heat map, of movement and stress, that would have been bright red over there. Wow. Because the exterior walls were just pushing down, but they had nothing to push down to. So in a, all along that wall, the whole length of the house, we just have all sorts of cracking around windows, doors, ceilings. It was it was the worst I've seen it on a new home. It and I've got, I've got that video on here too, so I'm going to share that. But I wanted to point something out here too. This is your condensation drain line from your AC unit, right? Your primary, yes. That's your primary right. drain, yep. And um, what's that mean? Cause, and I know what it means, but when it's kind of orange down here. So when it's, or that means there's something rusting in the unit. So it's, and it can mean a couple of things. So there's a secondary line too. The main unit produces condensation and it drains out. Now, if something's going on in the system where it's rusting and it's getting corroded, it'll come out orange. Um, but that secondary pipe that's hooked up to a pan. So the main unit might back up and flood or drip into the pan, that pan's designed to corrode and it'll come out orange on that pipe. So you'll know if it's leaking or not. Um, in a case like this, it, what, what I have seen before though, where they'll actually uh, plumb the primary to the secondary pan and the secondary to the prime, the, and then so the lower one will actually be the secondary and the higher one will be the primary, completely throwing everybody off thinking that their 
primary is going, but it's actually their secondary and it's filling up with water. I just saw that on the um, another house too. That was the same installer that we always see. So the low one should always be primary. High one should always be secondary. Because And this, the high one's going to be over a window, letting you know like, hey, why is it's 120 degrees out and dry? Why is there drips? So they want you to know that that secondary is full. So sometimes they mix them up. I did see a house that had been on the market for quite some time and, and it, you know, it needed a lot of work, but I'm standing outside with the, with the clients and there's this orange color all the way down the side of the wall. Yep. And he said, what's that for? And I said, well, you know, that's the condensation line. I go, uh, that means that the pan got all rusted. Yep. And I said, let's go inside the house and check something. So we went inside the house, we went upstairs, we went in the hallway and you could see where they had had to cut a hole up in the ceiling to repair the sheetrock. So yep. it they let it go so bad that it obviously caved in and they, they fixed it. But uh, they could have seen that rust color coming out. So if you're a homeowner and you start seeing that color, get in your attic and uh, yep. check as even soon if, as you can. Even if it's not active, even if it's just orange but not dripping, it, it's orange because it's telling you that that pan corroded. It, something came out at some point. And yeah. it's one of those really, it's simple to fix, but if you don't catch it, it causes like an insurance claim your ceiling's yeah. going to cave in. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. And out in Phoenix anyway, people back east are like, why, why would a air handler be in an attic? But that's how we do it out here. Well, here come the cracks. Uh, yep. Let's take a look at this, what you found. Yeah, this is the other side. Like this is down the wall. See that crack there above the window. That's the exterior wall. Through the window. Look at that step crack right there down the window. Other window right there. And then on that one too, it just, it just kept going. It just and it now it started and it started to pull on the um, the connecting walls too. So even the walls that weren't the exterior started to be pulled by that and split. And the craziest thing is, I I usually tell people when I'm inspecting for structure, like they'll see a crack. I'm like, listen, I see a crack. Unless I see a relationship, I'm not too concerned. But on that home where you had that big stucco crack, it literally went through, and the drywall had a matching crack on the interior. And I've never seen that before, where it just the whole wall split right there. And so they've got some engineering work to do there. I, I wish I could tell you how they're going to fix it. I, I have no idea. But that guy was just saying, he goes, what do I do? I'm like, you're probably going to be calling the ROC if the builder doesn't uh, help you with that. Yeah. that's uh, well, Move out. We're going to tear the house down and redo yeah. the foundation. I, I, what do you, pump the bottom with cement? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you probably got to do that. They're going to yeah pump it, peer it, whatever they're going to have to do. But it's, the home was clearly under stress. It was just, they failed the soil. I was in a old home built in the forties in central Phoenix. My client was thinking you know, he'd want to rehab it. And, but he didn't really have any concept as to how much it would cost. And I said, well, this home, I said, I'm not an inspector, but I said, I want to show you something. I go, see that crack on the wall. He goes, yeah. And I go, follow it. Goes all the way across the ceiling, all the way down the other side and all the way across the floor. This home is splitting in two. Yep. I go, you're not going to fill that with epoxy. <laughs> no, no, you're not. And, and I said, and I don't even want to know how bad the electrical is here. And I said, whoever buys this house is going to scrape it and then rebuild. I, you know, it, it was amazing, amazing to look at it. Now this yeah. one here, um, this is kind of entertaining and surprising, but it's a head shaker for me. It's like they did what? Um, so this is part of the, Oh, yeah. Entertaining part of your job. Yeah, cap so flashing. Parapet wall surrounding a flat roof. See this drip edge around the side. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Uh oh. Did not look good. Let's see what this is. Oh, it's just a wall cavity. That's cool. That's fine. Yeah, no problem there. You're totally allowed to just have that open like that. I try not to get cynical uh, at work, but it's. You know, How does that happen? It just, who knows? I, I don't know. I wish I could tell you. And I tell you what, 20 years ago when I started this, I used to take stuff like that personally. And now I try to have a little fun with it. But I'd be like, how dare they try to do that on my watch? And now I'm just like, ah, well, they, they missed another one. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how they do that. There are all these sorts of things that they just, how'd you guys do this? And yeah, it's, yeah, so I, I'm seeing a lot of superintendent turnover. And I'll tell you the last couple of years, it, it, people ask, who are the good builders? Who are the good builders? And I tell everybody, it comes down to builders, sell land and floor plans and they have to hire trades and the trades have to hire workers and those have been hard to find so they get whoever they can and when superintendent turnover it just gets the quality controls rough right now 
That is rough. So, I mean, did, by by all means, don't skip your inspection. Nope. No nope. new construction. You just you just can't. I mean, you do this every day, so yeah, you get to see it and look at it. it. Look, folks, it's it's well worth your money to to have this done because, and especially again, I'm going to point them to your Instagram page because yeah, you find things that I didn't even know exist. So it's uh, and very entertaining. And 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 what was that one where you actually you were looking at a ceiling fan and you said, uh, um, I look really tall in this uh, video. Oh, it was, that was a flipped home. It was a, it was a converted pad. They had a patio. They turned a living space. So it was already a low ceiling and I'm short. I know I look tall on video here, but I'm five, seven with heels on and they had a fan they, and they put a stub on it. They didn't and it was just, if I didn't duck, it would have hit me right in the head. It was not. Yeah. And I said, it made me look like I was five, nine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It yeah. did. I, I was not going to yeah. contest that at all. So, yeah. well, Dylan, let's make this a uh, a regular gig. I know we kind of fell out for actually yeah, quite did. a few months and mostly, hopefully, because you're just so doggone busy. But, uh, you know, let's uh, let's keep showing some of the things you find. Save on those videos and we'll share it with everybody. And it's great to have you back. Same here. I will I will say um, I've been busy because a lot of your watchers, your subscribers on the last one called me. And so I probably helped five, 10 of your subscribers and they're feeding this bee. So they're calling me. I'm finding more issues and with just creating more awareness. So your people definitely helped out. Grateful for that. And yeah, well, I'll we've, come back got, we, we've got some loyal subscribers on this yep, channel. It's amazing, you especially do. when we do live events to see the same names all the time. And uh, yep. um, it's I've been traveling, you know, I've been gone since May and I got back a day before yesterday. Oh, nice. So I was only able to, I got Starlink satellite and uh, which is fabulous until you are around trees. You can still get internet, but it'll tell you, you're going to experience an interruption every five minutes and uh, you can still stream a movie and you don't have any problems, but I couldn't get on a record with the team like I normally could. So I did some videos that I could upload, but it was, it was pretty disruptive. So it's good to be back home with a 900 download speed with Cox and, not have to nice. worry about it, but I do recommend if people travel or are thinking about Starlink, I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. It was Except for those darn trees, right? It was darn. <laughs> well, I was telling my friends the other day, he goes, I was up in, uh, uh, Flagstaff and he calls and he goes, what are you doing? I said, Oh, I'm just positioning my Starlink satellite. We just pulled in and I said, uh, I need to cut a tree down. I said, but the parks get so upset when you cut down the trees. <laughs> and I said, I'm just trying to help them earn their Starlink approved certification badge. There you go. Hey, yeah. looking out, man. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, Dylan, good to see you. Take care. Same here, Rick. Thank you. All right.